Hi, in this video, we will learn a very small aspect of the coronary circulation or coronary blood flow. Uh, first point that I may, uh, want to mention here is that heart has its own independent blood flow, heart has its own independent blood supply. Why? Uh, why what is the need for that? Uh, the need is simple. Look, uh, I mean, uh, the question is, if entire body's blood is coming to the heart, entire body's blood is coming into the heart chambers, then heart muscle could have derived oxygen from that blood. But that does not happen. Heart muscle has its own independent blood vessels, independent blood supply. In spite of the fact that entire body's blood flow, entire body's blood is coming into the heart chambers. So, why the, uh, what is the need for independent uh, blood supply to the heart, independent blood vessels into the heart? What is the need for that? Okay, the answer is, whatever blood is coming into the heart chambers, uh, you know this blood which comes into the heart chambers, it can, uh, I mean, uh, only an inner 75 microns of the heart muscle thickness can actually derive nutrition uh, and oxygen from this blood directly. The blood that has come into the heart chambers uh, can provide uh, nutrition and oxygen to only this small thickness of uh, the heart muscle and heart muscle is this thick. So, it means it will need its own blood flow, it will need its own independent vessels uh, and therefore, there is an independent circulation in the heart muscle. That was a first point that needs to be understood. Uh, now, there is, uh, you know, heart is constantly under systole, diastole, systole, diastole like that. So, there are phasic changes in the coronary blood flow and this video is about that. It is just going to explain the phasic changes in the coronary blood flow. Uh, first of, uh, before that, I will just put one question to you. You must have read that at higher heart rates, there are more chances of subendocardial infarct. I mean, subendocardial infarction, myocardial infarcts, uh, the subendocardial infarctions uh, uh, are highly likely to be uh, to occur at higher heart rates. Why is that? Uh, the answer will come up in this particular video. Now, see the phasic changes. Uh, in the coronary blood flow. You know, at the root of, before that, let me just explain uh, the anatomy of the coronary vessels. The main coronary vessels, they run on the anterior surface of the heart. They are running, uh, they are arising from the root of the aorta and they run on the anterior surface. Uh, right coronary artery, left coronary artery, which gives rise to circumflex and then left anterior descending coronary artery. So, they run on the anterior surface of the heart and then they turn backward and anastomose on the posterior wall of the heart. So, uh, these main branch, main uh, vessels, coronary vessels, they run on the epicardium and then their branches run perpendicularly and uh, then endocardial vessels will supply the inner wall of the heart. So, epicardium is where these main arteries which ar arose at the root of the aorta, right coronary artery and left coronary artery and then which uh, left which further runs down as left anterior descending and the inner wall, the endocardium. So, uh, now, the phasic changes in the coronary blood flow. Look, when the heart goes in systole, 
its movement is from outer wall to the inner wall outer wall to the inner wall heart contracts like this outer wall to the inner wall now at that point at that time during systole the endocardial vessels will be compressed and there will be no blood flow uh, in those vessels endocardial vessels during systole and let me tell you this uh, particular change is more pronounced for the left ventricle compared to the right uh, ventricle reason is that left ventricle is a thicker muscle mass and it has much higher pressure compared to the right ventricle the left ventricular pressures are much higher and therefore when the left ventricle contracts it is generating a much higher pressure systolic pressure and that pressure compresses these endocardial vessels during systole completely so no flow uh, in the endocardium during systole but there will be blood flow in the epicardial vessels they are open so uh, right and left coronary arteries which were running on the surface of the heart they will have blood flow during systole but uh, not the endocardial vessels now when the heart goes in diastole the reverse uh, happens the reverse happens in this way now during diastole heart expands outward at this time the endocardial vessels will open endocardial vessel will open during diastole and there will be blood flow in the endocardial vessels so systole the endocardial vessels will compressed they had no blood flow but there was blood flow in the epicardial vessels the uh, on the surface of the heart and diastole the opposite direction movement so that time endocardial vessel will open up and major blood flow to the uh, inner wall of the heart or major part of the myocardium will receive the blood flow during diastole this is again unique because remember all the other tissues in the body they receive the blood flow during systole but heart itself receives uh, its blood flow mainly during diastole well uh, also one more point during diastole as the endocardial vessel will open up these uh, inner vessel will open up uh, because heart is now relaxing heart is expanding outward so it is likely to compress slightly the epicardial vessel this time during diastole so this is how the blood flow will be altered uh, during uh, or there will be phasic changes you know when it goes into systole it compresses the endocardial vessels in fact it is said that when the heart goes in systole and compresses inward there is some amount of blood flow that uh, that goes back into the aorta you can see here that aorta emerges from the superior border of the heart and uh, its uh, uh, branches the coronary vessels so during systole the pre, uh, inward compression causes some of the blood flow to go back into the aorta from the endocardial vessels uh, and then uh, as the heart goes in diastole the blood will come into those endocardial vessels so remember heart receives its blood flow mainly during diastole uh, and the, with these changes as i mentioned contraction endocardial vessels compressed but epicardial vessels will have the blood flow and then relaxation diastole endocardial vessels will open up uh, but there will be slight compression of the epicardial vessels slight uh, not complete okay so that uh, was now uh, the last point is uh, which are uh, the question that i posed why are there more chances of subendocardial infarct during uh, or uh, at higher heart rates well at you know higher heart rates uh, or let me just uh, revise the cardiac cycle duration you know uh, at 72 beats per minute heart rate the cardiac cycle duration is 0.8 seconds if the heart rate doubles the cardiac cycle duration will be halved 0.4 uh, seconds so point i am making is as the heart rate goes on increasing 
the duration of each beat, the duration of each cardiac cycle will be shortened and shortened and shortened. If the cardiac cycle duration is shortened, then uh, ca uh, cardiac cycle has systole as well as diastole. Both systole and diastole will shorten, right? At higher heart rates, systole and diastole durations will be shortened. But diastole suffers more than systole. Remember this. Systole, diastole, both durations are decreased at higher heart rates. But diastole suffers more than systole. Diastole duration is shortened to a much greater extent compared to systolic duration. And what are we saying? Heart receives its blood flow and uh, the inner wall of the heart, endocardium, receives its blood flow mainly during diastole. So, at higher heart rates, diastole is going to suffer much, much more as I mentioned just now. Uh, although systole and diastole both decrease uh, at higher heart rates, but diastole suffers much more. So, there is very less time at higher heart rate, there is very less time for these vessels to open up and have the blood flow. And that is the reason that at higher heart rates, there are uh, more chances of, I mean, if you see the subendocardial infarct, it is more likely to happen at a higher heart rate. Reason is that at higher heart rate, diastole duration is very, very short and therefore the submedocardial vessels are, uh, they will suffer uh, for the blood flow as well uh, and that is the reason. So, uh, that was a very small aspect of uh, the coronary blood flow. I just wanted to mention the phasic changes. Uh, in the next video, we will describe the coronary circulation in detail.